everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris Talking of the BBL, mm-hmm. so this is a question I ask everyone. So your mm-hmm. views on it, so your views on the WBBL and the BBL, things that you reckon, you know, that are working is great and things that you reckon that they can improve on. What's your views on it? Okay. Um, yeah, so I think the WBBL gets better every year standard-wise. Um, so, like, the standard of... I think we've always had really good imports, actually. European, uh, we've been really lucky, like European and um, American. But just in general, not just the imports, but from the first player all the way down to the last player on the bench, I think the standard raises each year. Um, I think for the WBBL, playing like the big finals in the big arenas is something that's really good for us, um, especially when you know it gets put on like BBC Red Button or online. Um, and it's really important that those that those showpiece finals are in at, like big arenas and that it's taken seriously. And I think even like the last playoff final, um, I remember, and I think the last cup final that I was commentating on. They were the crowds were huge. So before it used to sort of be like, all right, well at half time the crowds will get bigger because they're coming in to watch the men's game after us. Oh, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I, I think put a crowd there from the beginning and yeah, 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 it's meant yeah. To be get there from the beginning. Kind of used to do that in Leeds as well. I think when 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 I played at Leeds, the, the I played on the second team mm-hmm. and before Leeds Carnegie, if you remember. Purple and white, was it? Yeah, the green and white. Green and white. Oh, at Leeds. I thought Leeds was purple. That was Leeds Force. That was Leeds Force. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just before that, we had the they were in D one, and they had the D one women, and the D one women game we packed out, and the men's won't get packed out, but the, it will get packed out a bit more. But the women's game was packed out to, to the point where nice. yeah, that kind of went that support from the beginning. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um. Yeah, so I think that I think that the WBBL improves each year. Um, you know, there's always areas that need working on, right? So I think, you know, you were talking to Ella, weren't you, about like media and marketing and stuff like that. Um, so I, I would really like to see, and I know, I think, you know, this is going to start to happen from sort of what I have gathered from like behind the scenes, but that media is going to... I, I, I think we're a women's league and we shouldn't just be there off the back of the men's league. And we're a women's league, so we should be pushing women's issues. Like, it's great to see, you know, stats and all of that sort of yeah. stuff. Um, but actually, you know, have we spoken about pay gaps? Have we talked about the effect of, like, periods on athletes? Do the athletes in our clubs get support with that stuff? Like, do we speak out on women's issues because we are actually a women's league? I think those like sorts of things are important. And then, like, your own identity, you mean? Yeah, and, it, you know, like, socially, that's, for me, as a female and as a female in sport, I feel like that's my responsibility um, because I think if we do that as athletes and the next mm-hmm. generation realise that, you know, they're not just here to play, like, it's not, it's a privilege yeah, it's and privilege. you should there are other things like once you get a platform that you should be able to give back. No, I, I, I agree with that. You know, as again, the marketing needs to be a bit more effective. Yeah, maybe not, just more personal. Yeah, not yeah, a bit more interaction with the players, interaction with the team, with, with the league. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we're BBR and WBBR are working together, but at the same time, it made them both have their identity instead of this putting it back off of each other, which I, I totally agree. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Because lots of these teams, they have, um, they have like, junior girls' programmes. Yeah. Like, actually, a lot of the girls that signed in at the beginning to, like, watch this live from my junior programme, you know, because they look up to the players on the older teams and they want to know what they've got to say. And um, so making it more interactive for them as well, I think, is important. Yeah, 
Definitely, definitely. The interaction part is something I do really um, agree should be done more in both both of the, the women and men's league. So yeah, hopefully they start recognizing. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> they will. <laughs> and yeah, we just work along with it. I, I reckon in some place in cases they should have a business a great businessman work with someone who's a great fan or who's a great fan of the sport. Yeah, you, it's one of the interesting things, isn't it, about like who runs the sports and who governs yeah. the sports? Because you obviously you have you're right, like you have to have you have to have business minds or marketing minds or I think, but and sometimes they don't have any affiliation with basketball. But I think it's a yeah. hard commodity to find. But if you can find somebody that can do both and that is loves basketball but is also good at marketing or loves basketball that is a business yeah. person, then. Definitely, definitely, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, so, what was it? Would you say was a defining moment in your career? Um, defining. So we've already spoke about like my like biggest successes, I guess. But I think defining moment was. So there was one uh, one night in my sophomore year in the states, um, and it and you know I'd come from England where I've not really ever had any worries about playing time or anything like that and I got to the States obviously like my first year and my second year I didn't barely play at all Um, I only played in my junior and senior year really Um, but it was yeah it was just one night I came back after practice and I was just getting really sick of (laughs) just really sick of it all and I was like what am like what am I doing like I'm out here so far away from home and I just want to play. I'm a basketball player. I want to play. Um, and it sounds really simple, but I was just online and I just started like Googling like motivational quotes because I was literally at the point where I was like, sod yeah. this, like this is ridiculous. Keep going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I found this one quote uh, by Anna Freud that was, um, I was always looking outside myself for strength and confidence, but it comes from within. It's there all the time. And I wrote it down and I put it up on my wall. And I think it was a real defining moment for me because in my life so far, my basketball career, it was very much like all my confidence came from what other people said to me or yeah. how many points I'd scored. And and actually, I don't, I wasn't really that confident in myself at all. So when I'm now like out on my own and I have to rely on myself, I wasn't able to do it. Um, and that was the moment where I was like, do you know what? No one's going to give you anything. Like You're going to have to go and get it yourself. Um, yeah, I'd say that was like my defining moment, really. That's good. That's good, man. You know, when you're in some situations, you kind of realise you can depend on yourself. So you realise how strong you are, in some, which is good. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, everything, everything. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, everything, Chris. Uh.